Hi, my name is Rio Wren, and I am the artist behind Raw Textiles here in Portland, Oregon. And I'm going to share with you today a short demo on ferrous acetate thickener. So with this process, you can basically take very few ingredients and create um, this kind of paste or paint, if you will, that you can apply to fabrics or paper uh, and do it in ways which are like painting, printing, silk screening, and with this you also don't have to steam the fabric afterwards, which you normally do um, to fix or set the, the dyes within the fibers after it's cured. So with the ferrous acetate, we're going to be putting in a, a fixative in the, in the thickener to begin with. And secondly, ferrous acetate is, uh, you know, king. And so it doesn't really need a lot to make it. I mean, it changes everything. Like just a teeny little bit will change the dynamics of all the colors and the chemistry. The recipe that I'm gonna be giving you is um, something that was, was given to me by Michel Garcia, who is a master dyer in France. And um, so I'm gonna be sharing that recipe with you in particular. Um, but with that being said, there are different recipes that I've seen out there for ferrous acetate thickener, and I'm by no means telling you this is the only one, but it is a good one. Then after we're done, doing the printing and it's cured, um, I'm going to whip up a couple baths um, with some simple ingredients um, that you can do as well and uh, just to see the change in when you immerse them and how you can shift the hues and the colors with this one ingredient as the base which is ferrous acetate. That I'm going to be doing samples with no mordant, so just wash fabric, and fabric that has been pre-mordanted in alum, and then fabric that has been pre-mordanted with tannin. So there's basically three options, and you could either do all three or you could do just one, um, because it you know could be very simple and it could be more complex. It really just depends on how how you want to handle it. So um, with that being said, let's just get started. What you're gonna to need to participate in the demo today is fabric samples. And I have a variety of small ones and then larger ones to make a more finished piece. We're gonna be doing no mordant, alum, and tannin. And then to make the thickener for the ferrous acetate, we're gonna need some distilled white vinegar, uh, some calcium hydroxide, which this is actually homemade. So these are um, oyster shells that have been collected. It could be any kind of shells um, accumulated and fired in a kiln so that they reduce from calcium carbonate and then they're sprayed with water and then they turn into calcium hydroxide. You can also order this um, at various places that sell dyes and such. Uh, usually I would say it's a limestone that's been mined, but sometimes they do sell um, fired shell as well. And then you're going to need some ferrous sulfate salts. And um, this is iron that you can make your own ferrous acetate bath with, but we're not even going to go there. I'm just telling you that if, as you get more advanced, you could do this. But as far as quantifying the recipe, you can't because you're gonna have a mix that's liquid and um, you're not gonna be able to consistently know the concentration of it unless you use that specific thing and test it and then do it for the batch, you know. And then the last thing we're gonna need is gorgum. And um, this is written in French, but it is a plant, it's from a tree, a gum. And you could also use gum tragothinth which is also um, comes from a plant and either will work fine, but I'm gonna use guar gum for this. Bella is super excited that you're here today and she hopes that you can make some beautiful art. All right, so let's mix up our ferrous acid thickener. We have 100 milliliters of vinegar and five grams 
a ferrosulfate. All right, and then we are going to add two and a half grams of the calcium hydroxide. You see that it's kind of turning green. Now this recipe is actually halved um, because originally it was calling for 200 milliliters of vinegar and I halved it because I just wanted it to be in a smaller proportion for this particular moment. So as you can see mathematically, it's pretty easy to just add or subtract to make the proportions work. All right, so it's pretty, pretty mixed up and it will kind of change color after it oxidizes a little bit. So at this point, before we add the gar guar gum, I wanted to just mention that we can half this recipe, and I'm going to do one half, um, but you can keep diluting it by more. Um, and the way we do that is take half of what this is, which was 100 milliliters, so we'll take 50 milliliters out, and I have that reserved here and I'm gonna put that in this and then from there I'm gonna take 50 milliliters of just plain vinegar and put it back into the diluted one so now what we've done is we've taken this one which is a hundred percent of the recipe and then we've diluted it by 50 percent and you can keep doing this by diluting this 50% into another half and then halving it by, you know, and keep you keep doing that and you get more diluted versions. And the reason why we do this, or you can do this, is so that you can see the different um, shades that you'll get onto the fabrics. So what we're going to do now is focus on this one right now. We're going to add just a very little bit. It doesn't need a lot because the guar gum uh, thickens pretty quickly. And we're going to just add, add some thickener. So it's kind of a pasty, depending on what you're using it for. Sometimes people measure this out, but I don't. I just kind of go by, oh, it's thickening, and I do it slowly because it, it'll thicken slower over time a little bit, you know what I mean? And I just wanted to clarify with this really quickly that this method is cold. We do not heat the vinegar at all. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one. Okay, so here we go. On to the next step. So I am back and my um, thing has changed colors as you can see and I'm gonna take this paintbrush and I'm gonna um, paint some patterns on these fabrics samples that I have laid out here um, just to kind of get an idea of what I'm gonna get as far as my results and um, I've got three alums and two tannins and one bamboo piece that has no alum. And so I'm just going to paint some um, geometric type of patterns. The reason why I'm doing some test samples with the alum is because from that I'm going to um, dip it into a dye that needs alum so that it will, you can see what it does once it's been dipped after the paste dries. And, you know, like I said, I just do some really basic, I mean, if you could even call this geometric. Then I will say it's geometric. How about if I add some more interest to it. Okay, and those are my samples that are painted and they need to dry. 
Um, and like I said, you can see that these are already starting to change because this is a tannin and I've just put an iron on it. So it's already taking, these are not going to really do a lot until after we um, alter them with some other dyes. And we're going to do that soon. Demo, I'm going to be doing my own personal project with the ferrous acetate um, using silk screening process. And so um, I'm going to be giving you a little peek inside of that, but I'm not going to actually show you step by step how to silk screen. Uh, the focus of this, this video is more about making the ferrous acetate thickener and um, the different kinds of things you can do with the thickener itself. Okay, so I have a setup right now of um, some silk screening action and I've got my thickened dye, which I think it's pretty good. It's kind of like pancake consistency. It might be a little bit runny. Um, but I'm going to try it out because I think that it'll be fine. So I'm just going to put some on here. And this is how you prep it uh, across the, the, the width of what you're screening. And I have this little thing that I just bought, a speed ball. And it's actually not as wide as the print itself, but I'm going to use it just because I wanted to try it out. Um, so I'll have to do several uh, several passes on it. Um, so you really want to push hard when you're screening it, and then you get it to the one side, and then I always like to just refresh screen it to the other side to make sure that that pass went through. Our fabrics are dry and we're going to wash them up real good because we want to get all this uh, gum paste out of it and normally when you do paste dyes you need to steam them after they're dry to fix them but this being that it's ferrous acetate and we've used the calcium hydroxide we've already fixed it and so now we just need to get the gum out of it so we're gonna we're gonna put it all in the water and this water is warm pretty warm so that it can get get it out as good as it can. Now I'm going to prepare the two dye baths that we're going to use with the samples that we made. One of them is going to be a tannin bath and this one in particular is oak. As you can see, it's been soaking and it's on a, a simmer right now. It's oak gall, which is this um, gall that I've collected from hiking trips and stuff like that. And it's very high in tannin. And when it's like broken open, this is, it's kind of got this spongy. And I just stick that in there and let it soak um, for a couple hours. And um, you can see that the color of the water is a lot different than this, which has nothing in it. And so we're going to dip the pieces of fabric that um, don't have any tannin or any mordant at all. We're going to dip them in here. So the other dye bath that we're going to make is um, lac, and that is for the alum samples. And uh, lac is an insect dye, and it comes from this parasitic bug that lives on the hosts of certain trees, like a ficus and um, uh, mostly grows in like Indonesia, India, and it basically lives on the tree and as it infests the tree it secretes resins and then those resins build up on the branches and so then they harvest those resin branches and they cook them down and they get this dye. So we're going to be using that um, in this water and it's kind of a nice reddish color um, different shades.
here we have our samples that are dried and this is the tannin that has just been painted and this is the tannin that was painted and then I dipped it into the lac bath just for a moment and then these were all the alums that were dipped into lac and then we have the piece that was just dipped in the tannin that had no mordant and these two which I didn't really reveal in the beginning but I did on the side are dyed in cochineal and then this one I painted and left it and then this one I painted it and did a quick dip in a tannin so they were both cochineal and they had this color this this one had the same coloring but then once I dipped it in the tannin it, it completely revealed a whole new shade these are the samples that I made which I use the different shades of dilution and you can see that in this one you really don't see any difference there's actually just two shades I did the 100% and the 50% and um, I thought that perhaps it was because the oak bath was too strong so I went ahead and did another one and you can see the actual shades a lot better and this one I did an extra dilution I went ahead and did a 25% dilution after the, the 50 which you had seen me do on film and and then I dipped it in the bath that was a little lighter of an oak gall and you can really tell it's not as dark like the blacks don't really come out but you can see the different shades um, there's one two three um, different shades so I did this one which is um, black and I did different shades I did three different shades and I did this several times and you can see that they just look all the same you can't really tell the difference and I'm just thinking that that's because the color with the alum it just absorbs the the iron so greatly that it's not going to give you those shades because I couldn't I mean you can barely tell um, I can see it with my eyes but this is a lighter shade than the middle one but other than that it's just real minuscule so now I'm going to show you the larger pieces that I silk screened and this is all just one print that I did with the different fabrics so this piece right here is the raw silk and this is a cotton and they were both dipped in the lac after they were printed and cured um, but the the silk as you can see is a lot more purple and so I believe that it wasn't pre alumed but it was pre mordanted with um, iron so because it should have a lighter pinky to red color and um, this one here in the middle is uh, was the one that was dyed in oak first and I think it was a really light oak because my thought was that when I printed it it would have turned darker gray black but it kinda stayed this like brown color and then I did another little dip on the one half in the oak bath that I had made um, and I got more of a black print so this is the final piece of this print and I did this one in black walnut before um, pre-dyed in black walnut and then was printed and you can see it's kind of like a brownish color so I dipped it half of it into the oak to give it a darker look and some interest this particular piece is going to be an altar cloth um, but these are the final pieces in total that I did with the one print and I think it's pretty exciting so I have one more piece I want to show you this is the last print that I did um, it was the piece that was linen that was not mordanted in anything it was just washed and then I dipped it in the oak and it has a really nice dark look to it and I did three of them so I want to cut them up and make something like maybe a pillow or something like that Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, follow along, take notes. I hope it serves you. And um, 
please, I would love it if you could follow me on this channel in YouTube and also pop over to Raw Textiles on Instagram and follow me there. And I can reciprocate by following you back and we can kind of get a peek inside each other's worlds. I also have a newsletter that is on my website at rawtextiles.com. If you would be interested in that, it's basically kind of a thing I send out maybe once a month or less, sometimes more depending on the action. Um, but I kind of talk about what's going on in Portland, what's going on in my world, sales that I'm having, new products that I'm listing, and workshops whenever that happens again. Um, but speaking of that, um, First of all, I'm going to be doing another demo, and I believe that I'm going to be doing the botanical printing, um, which I call composting. It's a method I developed over a decade ago, and um, I wanted to share just a teeny bit of it with you. And um, with that being said, I'm also wanting to work on um, developing some of these demos into larger formats so that they could be offered as like uh, teachings and um, more uh, elaborates. Um, details and things uh, so so that's exciting and I just wanted to say that um, I think that you know building community and um, keeping ourselves connected to each other and filling our hearts with love so that we can give um, and be the best person that we can be is really important especially right now in this kind of world that we live in we're all kind of in this situation at the same time and it's uncertain you know and so I just want you to know that I appreciate you and um, I would love it if you'd reach out to me and say hi so please do and have a wonderful wonderful day and I'll see you again next time many blessings